Hello everyone, this is Bob Browner, uh, recording coronavirus update number 19. So today we'll talk about how epidemics spread, how we could stop them, and uh, wearing a mask because you care. So uh, numbers still keep going up in Nebraska. Uh, looks like we've got two more uh, counties popping up, uh, both Colfax and Platt County, uh, again mostly surrounded by meat processing facilities. So we're still spreading and still growing. Uh, here in Lincoln, Nebraska, our numbers ended up uh, the week uh, 305 positive, so we're still in the upswing here in Lincoln as well. Uh, some folks keep saying, well, it's mainly because we're doing no more testing, and that's not the reason. If it, were, if it was more testing, then the percentage would have stayed the same. So the percent that we're coming back positive was 2, 3, 4, or 5 percent. Now it's up to 16 percent. So the percentage of people testing positive is also up. So it's not just increased testing. Uh, now, some are confused. It's like, well, if, uh, if numbers are still going up, why are we relaxing measures? Uh, I wish I could answer that because I actually went through the Nebraska Governors Association recommendations, seeming that maybe they, that's different and they, that maybe they're following other recommendations. Turns out they also have a recommendation to not start uh, relaxing measures until uh, declines in transmission have been going on for 14 days. Uh, when I recorded last week's episode, I didn't know that things weren't going to be uh, 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 extended. I assume they would actually. It turns out that uh, we're following a different playbook, and I'm not sure why. Uh, again, even the Nebraska National Governors Association, they said the reason you wouldn't want to do that and why you wouldn't want to just use uh, hospital capacity to, to expand is that by the time people start showing up and crowding your emergency departments, the outbreak might be farther than you think. And that's why you wouldn't use uh, new infections as your guide, not just hospital supply. So uh, I don't know what's going on. If you do, I'd, well, please let me know. Uh, to me, as best I can tell is that people are abandoning the 100 to 200,000 fatalities plan. So the American Enterprise Institute, Johns Hopkins, Harvard, National Governors Association all recommended that 14-day uh, guideline, but uh, governors across the country are not following that guideline. So my guess is they may have decided that that, that plan is too expensive, so we're going to create a new plan. I hope uh, we can find out what that is in the near future. Uh, the, my question is, are we adopting the plan that would limit us to 200 to thousand to five hundred thousand fatalities or we're just going to give up completely and let it go one million to two million fatalities so hopefully we'll have uh, some uh, more guidance coming out in the future that I can make some sense of uh, in the meantime though that turns out there may be something else you can do and maybe they are going to rely on this so the Swedish version for example may have more to do with relying on the individual population to do their part rather than having an organized government plan I think you need both actually uh, I think uh, you're going to need to have an organized plan to get you know below half a million fatalities so part of it is that we could do our civic duty. And so one thing I posted this uh, on Facebook last week, and assist, uh, if someone else had said it, but essentially assisting on your rights without acknowledging responsibilities isn't freedom, that's adolescence. So people only care about their, their right to not wear a mask and without caring about their fellow person. That's, that's just not mature. So uh, we're in Nebraska, I'm in Nebraska, and I'm a sixth generation Nebraska, and I think uh, a lot of us have an inherent distrust of government and expect the government not to do a good job. Um, I have a friend who thinks that we are, we're just programmed for that because most of us who came to Nebraska came from uh, other countries where we couldn't trust our government, so we just inherently rely on ourselves and not the government. Uh, this may be the case. So the rounders came from Alsace because the, the, their, their uh, area had been invaded, so they were either getting conscripted or forced to change their religion. That's one reason they left. Uh, the uh, Scots and Irish, they were uh, forced out by just starvation from the British, for example. Uh, so they all had good reasons to not trust their government. So we all are very, I think as a group, we tend to be very self-reliant, common sense and pragmatism are our, our, our values. We, are, we believe in grit, but also just doing the right thing for our neighbors. And actually, it turns out some combination of that could get us through an epidemic. So also, it's the golden rule. Uh, if you're a Lutheran like I am, you, know, you do believe in the, in the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do to you. It turns out every religion has a very similar one. You know, the Muslim version, none of you truly believes until he wishes for his brother what he wishes for himself. Uh, so there's all versions of this in every religion. So this is actually could help us get out of the epidemic. Uh, so basically it comes down to mask wearing, and you're wearing a mask to protect other people, not necessarily yourself. That's the main reason. It's the person carrying coronavirus that could affect the other people is the biggest effect, but if we both wear masks, it's actually going to be much better. So your mask protects me, my mask protects you. Uh, so how to act in a pandemic, uh, it's mask wearing, uh, limit the six foot spacing, small social groups, outdoors safer than indoors, and wash your hands. But there's not a magic rule. It's not exactly six feet. It's not exactly 10 minutes. Some people get a little hung up on the numbers. So sometimes it's good to understand the concepts behind the numbers. Well, uh, there's a great article, and I forwarded this on Facebook, and I'll include this in the YouTube uh, comment section and, and with email as well. This is a very good overview uh, put by together by Aaron Bromage about uh, some examples of how the virus spread. And if you understand how it spreads, it makes more sense to you. 
uh, one of the things the concepts he uses is time versus exposure. And let's say, for example, it takes a thousand virus, virus particles to infect you. Well, if you were breathing out 10 particles per breath times 10 uh, breaths per minute times 10 minutes, that would actually get you to a thousand. Now, if it was 20 particles, then it might be five minutes. And so it's the concentration uh, as, as not just time. And all of that gets trumped by one cough or sneeze. One, a cough or a sneeze can push out 200,000 particles and infect a lot of people nearby. That's why you need to be wearing that mask because you may be just developing that infection. That first cough, if it's in the grocery store aisle, may just infect all those people around you because that cough is a, it could expel a lot of particles. So it's a combination of both time and concentration of exposure, especially indoors. So the examples he uses is this is in a restaurant where uh, where patron A1 was the person infected. Four of the nine people he was with were infected later uh, in the next few days, as were three in this table here and two in this table here. Interestingly, the air conditioning was running this way and the outlet was this way. So it makes sense for the three people sitting behind the airflow to get infected. But why did these two people get infected? Well, it's probably a vortex effect. So the air is coming there, but also circling like this. And so on this side of the table, it's coming back by him again and affecting these people, whereas on this side of the table, Table, it's coming this way so it's this guy who's not infected so these people get, didn't get infected but this, this person did but these people are probably more than six feet away it's by being in a, in a concentrated area for an hour to hour and a half and nobody of course would be wearing masks while they're eating dinner so this is how things get spread in a confined area uh, another example is a call center where one person on this side of the call center was infected and 94 people got infected. Uh, 89 of them over here, but uh, also five on this side. These people, because they're in there day in and day out, it's only a few particles over time, over days. Uh, that gets almost everybody here infected, essentially. How did these people get infected? Well, it's probably the common areas. They may have gotten it in the elevator. If he coughed in the elevator, it could be in the bathroom if people aren't washing their hands. Uh, could have been in the break room, for example. So a few of these people get infected. That's why you should wash your hands. But here, if you're just all in an enclosed space over time, you would get, you could infect the majority of the room. He uses a couple examples, a church choir practice where 45 out of 60 were infected, a sports facility like a volleyball game, basketball game type uh, facility where 24 out of 72. A tragic example where when one person went to a family meal with his family, went to the funeral later on, then to a birthday party later, infected 16 of his family and, and friends, three of whom died. So what a tragic thing. Maybe he was just fine himself, but you have to worry about all the people around you that you might infect, and that's why you should consider wearing a mask. So we're, this is the situation we're in Lincoln right now where we have a lot of, uh, there was an outbreak in Smithfield. We now know that a lot of those people live in Lincoln. We know they've already infected their, their spouses and relatives. Now those people might be in food service. They might be at the grocery store. They might, the kids might be on the playground. So this is Lincoln right now. So all these places are places you could get infected. And if both people were wearing masks like these people, you would limit the uh, transmission dramatically. So another example is what happens next. I'll also put this in the comment section. This actually includes playable simulations, so you can watch in real time, play with variables, and see how infection can spread. Uh, the concept is, is this a reproduction number, and that the reproduction number doesn't have to go to zero. It only has to go to less than one. And so actually mask wearing alone may get us most of the way there, as long as we don't do some things that aren't very bright, like have a football game where 70,000 people show up. Uh, I also like as an analogy that epidemiologists use epidemic simulators to learn how not to crash humanity. So hopefully we're using these, and we're going to look at these simulators and see what we could do right and wrong. But one of the things that we could really do right, literally, is the hand washing, spread, and wearing masks. So you're going to see a lot of these uh, public health campaigns. This is the one coming out of Brian, which I think was very well done. And uh, Dr. Bill Johnson was on the uh, uh, press release Thursday and on the, on the mayor's conference. Uh, and so this is what you need to do. And the lowest transmission is both of us wear masks, not just one. There's also this weird myth that's going around about, well, if you wear a mask, you might re-inhale these your own viral and bacterial part is going to impair your immune system. I've never heard anything theory about that in 25 years of practicing medicine. I have no idea where the heck that idea came from. Uh, these people wear masks day in and day out, and they do just fine wearing masks day in and day out. Uh, you've got these people and surgeons, anesthesiologists, operating room nurses, scrub techs. They're all wearing masks. They do just fine. These guys are in doing asbestos mitigation paint shop. These people are in a clean room. All of them wearing masks. There's not a problem for their health wearing those masks. Um, also, they're wearing the mask for two different reasons. These people are wearing the mask so that they don't get infected by, uh, affected by the asbestos or the paint fumes. These people are wearing masks so that they don't contaminate others, uh, in this case, specifically infection control. So you wearing a mask does make a difference. That's why your surgeon wears a mask when he does surgery on you. So you should wear a mask. Also, this whole thing about, oh, it's this magic 10 minutes, 6 feet. So maybe a health department may have said that, but that's not magic. And again, here he says, why do you have to wear a mask in the, in the store? Well, you're not just wearing the mask to protect you. You're also wearing your mask to protect everybody else in the store, especially the people at the checkout counter. 
So again, it's this time versus exposure thing. You might not be in there for very long, so maybe you're okay, but what about the people who are in there all day all, all, uh, for their whole shift? So for example, I wear a mask, and this is me uh, when I went to the grocery store not too long ago. Uh, I wear a mask because I might get infected. My wife's a physician. She's seeing patients. She may bring it home to me at this point, some point, and I may be infected before I realize it. I want to make sure I'm not breathing out particles amongst the grocery store, making the fellow shoppers and the checkout person sick. Maybe I could get out of that grocery store in 10 minutes, but usually it takes me longer to shop in 10 minutes. But the person who's there all shift long is the checkout clerk. So here, here uh, G Landscaping, when I went there, I was in there maybe two to three minutes to pay for my mulch. I'm not wearing a mask to protect myself. There's almost zero risk of me getting in there for two minutes getting, but what if he's got people coming in day after all day long, person after person, and some of us are infected, he might get sick. So I wear my mask to protect him. And he looks like a pretty young, healthy guy, but what if he's living at home uh, and he's taking care of his grandfather who has illnesses and maybe he got infected, but what if he gets to the grandfather because I didn't wear a mask? I don't think that's the Christian thing to do, so I wear a mask. So what you'll start seeing is the public education campaign. Uh, the nonprofit I work with will be pushing out some things like this. I think, uh, you know, a grocery store should start having just like a restaurant, no shoes, no shirt, no mask, no service. Uh, the same reasons, uh, same effect. I don't think it's any hard. It's too much to ask, ask us to wear a mask. Frankly, if I'm going to go shop someplace and then from now on, if, if that, they don't have a mask rule, I'm going to go shop someplace else. So if there's one place that has a, a place, the rule that have masks, I'm going there and I'm not going to the other place. And I think you should do the same. So hopefully this is helpful to you. And again, uh, we've, we've been putting these videos on the healthylincoln.org website. These are the places I work. This isn't necessarily the opinions of all these people. I think for the most part, they tend to agree with what I'm saying. And that's why they help distribute a lot of these. But this is what I do for a living. And uh, hopefully these uh, updates will help you uh, survive this epidemic.